This is my attempt to relate all those haunted and paranormal encounters I personally experience in the past 40 years. And I hope to illustrate as detail and accurately as possible according to the actual event. These are absolutely genuine and I kept them until now, to share with everyone. I hope you are ready. Let's begin. Before we begin, please help to subscribe to the channel. It will not cost you anything but your subscription would meant a lot to me. So please go ahead and click on the subscribe button now. And, please share it with your families, friends, and colleagues on all your social media platforms, so they can enjoy these stories too. Let's continue. In the last episode, the experience happened when I traveled to Ipoh, Malaysia. After dinner, I went for a drink and returned to my room. It was around 9 p.m. when I am back in my room. When I was about to take my shower, I heard the doorbell rang. Since I wasn't expecting anyone, I assume it's my neighbor doorbell, therefore I ignored it. As I just begin to shampoo my hair, I heard the door knocking. The sound is a bit soft at first, together with the shower on, I can hardly hear it. So I still assume it was for someone in another room. After a while, it rang again. This time it was loud and clear, I definitely confirm it's my doorbell. So I shouted, wait a minute. While I wrapped myself with a towel and went to answer the door. Since the bathroom is right next to the door, from the shower to the door, literally need less than 10 seconds. But to my surprise, no one was at the door. There is no one either in the corridor. So I guess I heard wrongly again, the doorbell must be from the floor upstairs or below. Therefore, I closed the door and went back to my bathroom. As I was about to turn on the tap, it rang again. This time, I am very sure, it was my doorbell. So, I wrapped up myself with the towel again and walked to the door, and I shouted, coming. Again, there was no one at the door when I opened it. I even stick my head out to the corridor to check if there was anyone there. But all I can see was an empty corridor, and there was no way anyone can hide away since the wall and all the room doors were completely flush. At that point, I was sure that someone was playing a prank on me, so I decided to wait behind the door and surprise the culprit when they pressed the doorbell again. Nothing happened, so I thought it must be my neighbors who could be listening for noises in my room before they decides to attack again. So, I intentionally turned on my shower and let it run. Then, I hide behind the door and peep through the peeping hole. I waited for quite a long while but the corridor is still vacant, and when I just lifted my head away from the peep hole, it rang. Immediately, I opened the door. But again there was no one. I stick my head out into the corridor and I saw nobody. However, I heard a small child giggling and footsteps running away from my door to the end of the corridor. Immediately, I felt a sudden chill up my spine, goosebumps grew all over my body. Hairs all over my body started to raise too. It seems like the surrounding temperature suddenly dropped below sub-zero. And, the TV turns on by itself. I was so scared that I hide myself in bed. Then, the lights went off, I was in total darkness. I begin to start my prayers. Not long after, the lights came back. I quickly got dressed and packed up. It was only close to midnight when I check out from the hotel. Although the hotel offered me another room after I explained what happened to them, but I simply have no guts to go through everything again. Therefore, I rather stayed in the lobby and sleep on the couch till the next morning. Till today, I still do not know the background of that hotel and who was that little child. If you have any information related to my encounter, please leave them in the comments below. Your input will be greatly appreciated. If you like the content of this video, please click on the like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you will be informed immediately whenever I uploaded my next video. Let's continue. If you ask me, where most of my haunting and paranormal experiences happened. One of them is definitely, hotels. 
That's why I usually get myself either very tired or drunk before I get back to my hotel when I am traveling alone. But sometimes, it doesn't work. Being a frequent traveler, it is often difficult to choose between family and work. Especially when you needed to travel. However, if there is a chance that you can stay just a few more hours with your family on your weekend, you would. I can still remember one of the business trips to Shanghai, I chose to fly on a red-eye flight so that I can spend more time with my family and start working on the very first thing on Monday when I arrived. The flight takes about a little more than 5 hours, and by the time I arrived, I should have amber time to freshen up and even get breakfast before heading for work. I slept like a child and woke up just in time before the landing. The disembarking was pretty smooth since it was not as crowded as in the daytime, moreover, most of the people were not in a hurry anyway, and many others were still sleepy and tired. The immigration queue starts to build up, but luckily I had an APEC card that allows me to take a special lane to expedite my clearance. After immigration clearance, I picked up my luggage and headed straight to the arrival reception hall. Since most of the other public transport hasn't started operation at that time of the day yet, I have to take a taxi to my hotel. So I dragged my luggage down to level 1 to the taxi stand. The taxi queue was long but moving relatively fast, I guess there were lots of vacant taxis at that time. After getting in the taxi, we left the airport very fast since there was no traffic at all. The taxi was speeding all the way because the highway was literally empty, and the road was pretty straight. It was still before 5 am when we crossed the Nanpu Bridge, there was no other cars at that time. Who see streets were so quiet when my taxi drive passed. Very soon, we arrived at my hotel. The hotel reception desk was dark, leaving just a very dim table lamp and the reception signage. I cannot find anyone at the reception, so I pressed the service bell. Then not long after, a man turned up in the middle of nowhere, I didn't think much about it at that time because I was too engrossed looking at some of the messages on my handphone. After the usual check-in administration, the man handed me the key and told me that my room was allocated at the appendix building, and that I should exit from the door on the right to reach the lift lobby leading to the building. So, I took the man's advice and dragged my luggage along to the appendix building next door. Surprisingly I didn't see any security or anyone. The lift lobby was dimmed and only one lift was in operation. It was a circular building, the type that you can literally walk a full circle, and I had a room with a balcony facing out. When I opened my room door, I can feel a gust of cold air blowing right on my face. When I opened the door further, since it was almost dawn and the night curtain was not drawn, I can see a woman's silhouette standing by the balcony. Initially, I was shocked and I thought I had been given a room that was already occupied. And I counterchecked my room key and the room number again. Then quietly, the dark shadow moves towards the bed and sits down on the edge. Then I begin to realize what was actually happening. Immediately, I felt a sudden chill up my spine, goosebumps grew all over my body. Hairs all over my body started to raise too. As my heart rate shoot to the roof and my adrenaline rushes, I slowly close the door, hoping that I would not attract the woman's attention. I start running toward the lift, I kept running for so long and I might have passed the lift lobby a few times before I realized it. Getting back into the lift alone was quite a struggle, but I didn't have a choice. It was either getting back to the hotel lobby where I knew there was someone there, or facing the woman when she catches up. The lift lobby was cold and quiet. My shirt was totally wet and soaked with my cold sweat at that time. When I came out of the building, I felt a great relief, and furthermore, I knew the break of daylight was coming. I went to the front desk there was a female reception staff, she seems to have just woken up. When I explained what happened to her, she didn't believe me, and she said that they don't have any male front desk staff on duty. Although I argued about the fact that I was check-in and I am holding the key. She explained that the key was left on the desk for prepaid customers like me who had pre-registered prior to the early morning arrival. Eventually, I can see the discussion is going nowhere. Therefore I insist on changing to another room in the main building instead. This time, I went over to the concierge and in order to get someone to accompany me, I wanted to ask the concierge to show me to my room. As we were walking to my room, 
The friendly concierge confirmed that they don't have any male staff on duty last night except the security guards. She was having a break together with the front desk around the time that I said I checked in. Anticipating my arrival, they left the room key on the counter before going for their regular break. Finally, she showed me my room. After she left, the sun has already came, I started to unpack my luggage. I felt safer then with the sunlight, at that moment although at the back of my mind I am a bit worried about tonight, however, all I can think of is to get ready for my business meeting and let my worry for later then. Then I quickly took a quick shower and changed to my business attire. After then, I went down to the breakfast lounge for a quick breakfast and returned to my room while waiting for my transport to pick me up. Although I still didn't figure out who that man was and who was that woman in that room, but I guess I should be okay as long as I stay away from the appendix building. So, you may think that seeing a ghost may be scary enough, or being alone in a building is the worst, but let me tell you another story, then you might change your mind after the next episode, Lost in Hong Kong. If you like the content of this video, please click on the like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you will be informed immediately whenever I uploaded my next video.